Brave Star. Maybe it was a Mangalore. It's Castle Brave Star. Hey guys, welcome out to another episode of That New Toy Smell. I'm Pixel Dan. And I'm Killin'. Filling in for Duvall. Where's Duvall? Um, sick. He's sick. H1N1. H1N1. That's right. Actually, Scotty Cash actually does have H1N1. Yeah, yeah, not good. That's why he's not here either. Not good. So we're doing this, uh, we're doing this new format for the show, for That New Toy Smell. We thought we'd try something different. Uh, we're not breaking up the segments anymore. We're doing more of like a... Like a real show. Like a real show. We want to make it more like a studio show. So that's what we're doing. It's still going to be awesome. Although this isn't really the setup. We're still working. This is like yeah. a tentative tentative go at it. So uh, think of this as <laughs> that new toy smell round to the trial run. It's like the... the what, what is that called when you get like a, a trial run at a video game or something? A uh, demo. demo. The demo or like the... Demo. There you go. This is the demo. Beta testing. <laughs> beta testing. That's what I'm looking mm. for. Thank you, Dirt. <laughs> the beta test of that new toy Hi, smell. Guys. <laughs> Hi, <how you> doing? <laughs> Dirt back there running the camera. So uh, what we're going to do is before we get into the actual review video segment of that new toy smell, we wanted to kind of go over some of the hotter news headlines this week for, for toys. Uh, stuff that we usually will talk about on our weekly toy podcast, It Figures. Uh, and one of the big toy, uh, toy headlines I wanted to talk about this week was Mattel's announcement, um, or the, their, their first photos of the Battle Armor He-Man figure. Um, Battle Armor He-Man is one of the bonus figures in the Masters of the Universe Classics line, and he's the first variant that we've seen so far in the entire line. So he's like, it's the first time we've seen like a new He-Man figure that's not the original He-Man. And... Generally, people don't like variants, but when it comes to battle armor, people just go gaga over that guy, so everybody's cool with it. So it's the flip? Well, it's based on the one with the flip chest. So it doesn't flip? It doesn't flip. Well, then that's, that's not battle armor here. <laughs> and that's kind of why I wanted to bring it up, because uh, w the way that they did it is they actually have interchangeable pieces that you can put on his armor, so that if you want it to be clean, you can just put that piece on. If you want it to have the scratch on it like this, no. you can just put that piece on. No. So that's no. how... No? no. See? It really, if it's battle armor, you get to punch it, and it's and just it's flip. flip. That's and that's battle armor. And see, that's what I'm kind of wondering, how many fans actually feel that way about it. Because what? The, the battle armor, I mean, that action feature was awesome. Uh, generally, I'm kind of an anti-action feature person, and I think a lot of collectors these days are So now. it's is it just the same He-Man? With an armor piece? He's got, yeah, it's basically the same He-Man. He's got, like, a new armor piece that is removable. Like, you can take the whole thing So, off. identical He-Man. He's uh, The figure itself So, seems why identical. don't they just sell me the armor? That's a good, very good point. It is a very good point. You, I mean... I mean, not that we don't like He-Man figures and more of them. Right. But, if it's the exact same figure, I just want the armor. That's And that's a good point. I mean, if it doesn't have the action feature built into but it. But if you flip it, if you make a little spinning wheel, then I definitely want that figure. <laughs> but you're not going to get it since it doesn't have the... It's no, not one well, you'd be interested in. Well, no, we're going to get them all. Well, but, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the other every, thing. If you're collecting yeah. them, you're going to collect them all. Yeah. It's just really... Many of the, the collectors out there are like... Just help armor. help my pockets out a little bit and just give me just the armor. Just give me the armor. Yeah. Now, Mattel has said that they're going to work on some type of an accessory pack or something where they're trying to release a pack of just weapons and whatever, but they haven't announced like any details on that. I have no idea when that's coming. Something like the battle armor seems like it would have been perfect for that. Well, I'll let it slide. Just because... Just because... <laughs> because we had no other choice. Well, I mean... <laughs> And they, and they said at the beginning, Mattel did say at the beginning that they're not doing any action features whatsoever. So, I mean, it's kind of like we should we could expect that this is the route they were going to take. And I do appreciate them 
offering the ability to change the plates on it so that you can have the scratched pose or the double scratched or or whatever. But it it really does kind of lose something. So in it. the Skeletor's next, I hope. <laughs> I, they haven't announced it, but uh, I can only imagine that if they're doing the Battle Armor He Man, we got to. Battle you got Armor to. Skeletor. Yeah, we have to. I think a lot of people actually probably use the Battle Armor figures as their main He Man and Skeletor as kids, so mm -hmm. I know a lot of people would like to see that, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, and, and like the bio on the package. That's the other thing I was really interested to see, how they were going to explain it in his bio. And basically, Mattel, the bio on there just states that. Adam is able to, you know, draw further powers from Grayskull to acquire special armor if needed in battle, and that's their explanation for why Battle Armor He-Man exists. Oh, well, that makes sense. I'll take it. Yeah, yep. I mean, you don't need an elaborate explanation for anything like that. I don't, you know, that's perfectly fine with me. Uh, we saw, you know, in the cartoons, he had snake armor and stuff like that before, so whatever, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. I think I'd rather have the snake armor, though. The snake, the snake armor is cool. <laughs> I think a lot of people would rather have, like to have the snake armor. I don't know about rather, but a lot of people would like to have the snake armor. Well, we'll take what we get. We'll take what we can get. <laughs> so that's uh, that's just one of the main headlines I wanted to bring up this week. If you guys want to get more of that, you can always check out the podcast every Wednesday on ThatNewToysmall.com. Check out it figures. Moving right along, I wanted to kind of talk about uh, the review that we're getting into today. Um... Transformers and Transformers 2 both coming out in theaters has kind of brought the whole robot transfor the transforming robot toys back into the mainstream I think you know a lot of kids these days are are back into Transformers and of course that was big when we were young right and uh, so you know Transformers it's it's a real hot thing right now but I I think a lot of people forget about and of course kids these days don't even know about some of the other characters like the Gobots and then, of course, my favorite <laughs> spinoff from the GoBots, the Rock Lords, which you can see right here in front of us. Now, the Rock Lords didn't transform into cool, you know, trucks or cars or airplanes. They just turned into rocks. <laughs> and to some people, that might be, you know, whatever. That might be boring or silly or, but, uh... Well, in their defense, back in the day, everybody was playing outside more, so it made more sense. That is true. For it to be outside, you know, you, <laughs> you know, you could say I have a whole army of rock lords and have a bunch of rocks, <laughs> 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 and then just have outside. like one or two commanders, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's how mom got out of buying a bunch of toys for a kid. Just go play with the rocks outside. I'll give you one. He could be the leader. Of well, the rocks. you know, we are all super rich or nothing. You know, we, we had to make do what we could. Sticks and rocks, rock lords. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a couple rock lords as a kid, but like I completely forgot that they existed until a couple Toy Man shows ago. Believe it or not, I stumbled across some rock lords at a Toy Man show, and uh, I just like it brought all my memories back. I forgot they existed. I got so excited, so I scooped them up, and of course I had to do some looking into them. And that's what we're going to talk about today. It's one of my absolute favorite transforming toy lines. It's the Rock Lords, so let's take a look at that video. During the 80s, the Transformers dominated the market when it came to transforming robot toys. But chances are, if you knew of the Transformers, you were also aware of the GoBots. In 1986, the GoBots starred in their very own full-length animated movie titled Battle of the Rock Lords. Introducing us to new characters in a spin-off to the GoBot series. Tonka brought the Rock Lords to toy form in the North American market, while Bandai released them overseas. Aside from the one movie these characters appeared in, they never received their own cartoon series or even tied back in with the GoBots. So, once they were introduced, they were pretty much on their own. With the tagline, Powerful Living Rocks, the story of these characters tells that the heroic boulder, leader of the good rock lords, are in a constant struggle to save their home world of Quartex from the destruction by Magmar and his band of evil rock lords. The gimmick to the toys themselves were the same as most other transforming toys at the time, with the exception that instead of turning into cars or jet planes, they all turned into various types of rocks. 
Now I know what you're thinking. Wow, rocks, how boring. <laughs> and I'm sure you're not alone in thinking that when first hearing about the Rock Lords. So did yours transform? Yeah. What does yours transform into? Uh, hello. Oh, it goes from Splinter to the party van? Doesn't yours? Well, no, actually mine's a space shuttle and a lion, and then it's like motorized, and it turns into like the space lion dinosaur shuttle thing. Like, it's three different things in one. I don't know, mine's got like a million pieces. It'd take like an hour to transform. This thing's awesome. What does yours transform from? A rock. A rock? Like, rock. from the ground? Who's gonna buy a dumb rock toy? Dude. <laughs> But even though they just turned into rocks, there really is something special about these guys. For one, they're quite a bit more poseable than a lot of the transforming toys at the time. And in robot mode, they really do have some creative and unique looks. And I've gotta be honest, in rock form, they're really great as well. Each has its own unique style, modeled after a different type of rock. The details are what make them great. Some have a cool marble-like swirl to them. Others just have little rocky bumps or holes. And then there's some that are even metallic. So even though they just turned into rocks, they were still dang cool looking rocks. are a bit cliche, but still a lot of fun. Characters bear names such as Boulder, Magmar, Nugget, Brimstone, Crackpot, Tombstone, The Two-Headed Sticks and Stones, and many others that are just like that. There were only three series of figures released but they got more and more elaborate as the line went on. Towards the end, a series of Shock Rocks were released. Shock Rocks added action figures to the Rock Lords. Three of them had features such as ball throwing or a grappling hook, while the other three had a push button that automatically made them transform. Then there were the Jewel Lords. Released as part of the third series, these three figures were made of a translucent plastic and were more crystal based than rock based. The Jewel Lords are really sweet looking toys, but are now three of the hardest figures to find out of the Rock Lord series. Aside from the normal characters, there were also a few different beasts in the line. First up were the two Rockasaurs, Terra Rock and Spike Stone. These two worked the same as the rest of the figures, but were slightly larger in scale. And then there were the bizarre Gnarlies. To me, the Gnarlies never even looked like they fit in with the rest of the Rock Lords. They featured a real type fur and motorized legs and mouths when you push them along. There were even a couple of vehicles released. My favorite was the Stonewing. This vehicle has a really cool marble look to it and it actually was made with a pretty heavy die-cast metal. Most toy vehicles created for action figures at the time weren't built that strong. It had the ability to transform slightly from a land vehicle to an air vehicle. The line only lasted for three series of figures, but as you can see, we got a lot to choose from in the line. There was, however, an unproduced playset that never made it past prototype stage. And it's really a shame. 
because this Stonehead playset would have been a great addition. Rock Lords was a really great series of toys. It brought something different to the world of transforming figures at the time. Eventually, the Rock Lords faded off into obscurity as figures like the Transformers gained more and more popularity over the many years to follow. But if you're looking to discover or rediscover a really unique and interesting toy line, the Rock Lords are definitely a good one to check out. Alright guys, welcome back. Hope you guys enjoyed the video segment on the Rock Lords. I know I did. You did? Oh, I loved it. Did you it. like it? I had a lot of fun putting that one together because these guys are just so cool. Uh, so I thought we'd do a little hands-on with them now just to kind of get a little closer look at some of the figures. Um, more of just kind of a personal opinion on them here. I don't, I don't know how often you've really played with them. This is um, Okay, well, I did have some of these when I was growing up, but I, to be fair, I was confused for a while with the He-Man figures that were the Rocks. The Comet, like the Comet Warrior guys. Right. Yeah. So, and actually when I got some of them in, when, when I bought some of these, uh, I got a couple in there and didn't even realize they were He-Man. So, oh, yeah. yep. you had that confusion there. There's two He-Man. Is there more than two? There's just two in the He-Man line. Right? So they look just like the Rock Lords. A little bigger, but yeah. A little bit bigger, but, but they're like same idea. But yeah. if you found these in the bin somewhere, you wouldn't even know. They were different. Oh yeah, you're probably right. Definitely right. Especially for guys that you know aren't familiar with them. Like, I, I, I joke around about how, you know, they may not be as exciting as Transformers or anything, but like, when I was a kid... <laughs> I was a big rock collector. Like, seriously, I would walk around outside, I would pick up rocks, I'd bring them home to my parents, I'd be like, look what I found! They'd be like, yeah, great, rocks. Good job. So, <laughs> but, like, like because of that, I think that's what, that might be why these are so interesting to me. Like, the, the transformations are, are pretty easy and simple, and some of them are goofier looking than others. Like, this one here, that just looks I mean, like a dude folded up. Yeah. <laughs> But but like maybe they, that's how they came to be. Yeah, they were like, they, well, we got these weird molds. They transform. <laughs> they don't really look like anything. Rock lords. <laughs> Rock lords. But then you got guys like Boulder here. When you get him folded up, like he actually looks like a, a boulder. You know, it's a little better. Some well, of them are better than others. Uh, one of the ones like here, I think his name is Magmar. Well, I don't remember all their names off the top of my head. But when you transform this guy, yeah, he looks about Magmar. He's red, right? <laughs> Magmar. Like, this guy here, his face doesn't even go away. So, <laughs> you know, it's like... See, some of them are better than others. Wait, but, uh, well, how many were there in this line? The, um, is this, like, there pretty were, much it? This, this is a, a good portion of them. There were about three waves of them, as we talked about. And then... Um, three waves? Yeah, there was about three, only about three waves. They didn't last long. They were just a spin-off of the GoBots. You know, because they were actually in that GoBots movie. And they spun off from that, so... So, available at Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think one of my favorite things Wait, about Wait, is that them, a crack at Kmart or a crack at the GoBots? <laughs> I think yes. I think it's a crack at both. <laughs> um, one of my favorite things about them, though, is actually... Like no, wait, 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 wait. Their... The GoBots were awesome. Okay, look. <laughs> Not all of us were rich growing up. We had to play with rocks. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you had the GoBots. Right. And uh, I like the GoBots. I had they were cheap. And, you yeah. could break them. You could break them. And get another one. <laughs> you could break them. And not get in too much trouble with the with the transformers. You know, you break those, you get in trouble. Right. Like how dare you break a ten dollar toy? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. Transformers are exp they're expensive now too. But uh, one of my favorite things about these actually is their paint jobs, especially when they're on the rock form. What? Not all of them. Not, okay, so this one's a little little more bland. But look at this guy here. He's got like the the little marble effect going on. With like the the paint strokes and everything and and like same with like the vehicle i don't know what it is about that but that's really appealing to me <laughs> and i think that's one of the reasons i like them so much it's just the cool little the marbly look to them well who fits in there the that's yeah see that's one thing i wanted to talk about with the vehicle it's a cool vehicle but hold on hold on this guy's he's he's small he's small get him in there did this vehicle come with a figure or is it by itself it just came by itself um I believe it's actually made for this guy. Well, this he guy fits in there all right. 
But the vehicle's like made out of like a die cast metal. It's like super heavy. And I was I was pretty impressed by well, that. Well, rocks too. are heavy. Rocks so. are heavy. You're right. They're not made of die cast metal, but made by Tonka. Um Bandai. Tonka. And Why Ban- Bandai. Bandai, you're right. Because uh 1985 was, Bandai. They were like Bandai in Japan and Tonka here in America. Just like the Go that's how the GoBots were too. So Oh right. <laughs> it is yeah. Well I mean it's just like with uh, Takara and Hasbro for the Transformers. So you know, Takara takes care of him in Japan, Hasbro took care of him. I don't even know how this so. one's possible, but he's got one leg forward, no, one leg back. Gotta, like, like, turn it. <laughs> I don't know what you did. Hey look, he's all better. Oh, I just I turned it all the way backwards, so we're good. <laughs> anyway. Well now his head's backwards. I know. I I turned it There we go. Okay, this, well, this is us they did come with rocks. instructions, but we don't have those. <laughs> so, you know, 20 years later, we're going to kind of figure it out. That's right. <laughs> anyway. No, no, it's still not right. No, and then he's got to take his foot out now. Wait, fold it out. This is, okay. This is a big controversy this guy. Well, this, Yeah. We well, wanna... How do you transform rock lords? We don't know. <laughs> You know, how many comments are we going to get? You guys did it wrong. Yeah. That's not how you transform them. We don't even know. Well, we're I want to make sure we're doing this correctly. And besides, this is cutting edge technology back in 1985. That's right. We want to make sure that we're representing it well. <laughs> That's right. Because this is going to look retarded now. But <laughs> if we go back. five called, you're not representing. Yeah. I'm just trying to keep it real. <laughs> right. Keep it real on the Rock Lords. All right, Killen. Final thoughts on the Rock Lords. What do you think of the line? Uh. Well, I wish... Do you know what the retail price was? I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, well, then. if you like the spinoff, if you like Transformers, and you like these kind of uh, toys, they're actually not that badly priced on eBay, so... Oh, yeah, they're actually pretty easy to get a hold of now. Uh, some of the ones from later on in the line were a little harder to get a hold of now, and they're a little more pricey, but generally you can track these guys down for a pretty good pretty good price. So if, if it looks like something that interests you, I definitely recommend going out seeing what you guys can find. Cause yeah, I don't know if I collect them by themselves, but if you're collecting all the Transformers anyways, you, you kind of got it. Yeah, if you're a Transformer collector or just, you know, the robots type stuff, or if you're like me and you like collecting obscure stuff... <laughs> well, that's it, these, yeah. These are a lot of fun. <laughs> these are one of my more favorite of the obscure toy lines that I collect just because of I mean they're just strange you know how often do you find toys that turn into rocks you know like well great now we gotta hurry up and transform them all because <laughs> get them all for the final shot you, you got this thing going and I don't want to look retarded <laughs> and not have this it, this is transformed I guess that's yeah it is oh wait a minute no you told it, me it doesn't turn into a rock though Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> this is this is it transforming into an airplane. Oh, yeah. I thought I broke it. <laughs> no, you got it, dude. Push this button right here. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's there important you because there are missiles it's... in the back to flip out, aren't right there? Yes. Well, you didn't even tell me that. There you go, dude. What a jerk. Wait a minute. Hey, pull, this, pull this thing down in front. Well, how how does this shoot? It shoots backwards. You know, the guy guy's behind him. You know, honestly, back in the 80s, shooting backwards was an important feature. <laughs> but in today's technology, I don't you don't really see too many toys with guns shooting backwards yeah, anymore. Yeah, that's funny. That's not even something I thought of. <laughs> okay. All right, well, that's... That's why you need two people this is, fresh perspective. That is. That's why. That's why. That's exactly why we're doing this new format. We gotta get Killen's advice. Well, that, that's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah, you it don't is. see too many toys it's shooting not, backwards anymore. <laughs> You're right. It's not something I've even thought. But of. this was like really important back in the day. You're like, well, how are you gonna get the guys behind you? <laughs> they yeah. didn't have heat-seeking missiles. You know, what you mean? gotta have guns in the back. <laughs> Alright, all right. well that's going to wrap up our look at the Rock Lords. So I hope you guys enjoyed our video and the little after segments. Before we close out the show, we wanted to do one final thing, which is going to be our new fan corner. Now the fan corner of that new toy smell is going to be where we take a look at fan art or answer questions sent in by the fans. Anything that the viewers want to send us that we can discuss on the show, this is the part of the show we're going to do it. So, oh, so like if somebody... 
sends us something through the mail, we can do a quick review. Yeah, if, if somebody wants to send us something they actually want to see us talk about, we can present it right here on this portion of the show. If somebody wants to draw pictures of me and Killen playing with rock lords, we'll show it right here on the show. This is exactly what we I wanted wanna, to... I want to see that. Yeah, me too. I do want to see that. When do you guys do that? There's oh, a lot oh, of great artists Answering out there. questions, though, that'd be really Answering funny. questions would be great. So if you guys want to... You know, it doesn't even have to be completely about toys. Just, you know... Maybe you want to know about uh, Lady Death right here. We can answer questions I can read the about back it. of the box like anybody else, so... <laughs> So today we wanted to go ahead and what I wanted to show off is some of the oh. fan work. What are you doing? Break no, it's good. No, okay. it, it works that way. Um, on our forums, we actually have quite a few artists. And one of the cooler uh, pieces of fan art I've seen come in has actually been pictures of our buddy Dirt. Hey! Uh, yeah, Dirt! <laughs> Which I have not seen um, yet. Uh, I, I really feel bad if I can't pronounce his, his username right. It's like our coers or our coers. I'll bring his name up here. But he did this fantastic picture of dirt, kind of like a comic book pose. We're going to throw it up here on the screen right now. Stuff like that is fantastic. This is awesome. So any other artists out there that want to get your, your stuff on the show, this is great. We love seeing this kind of stuff. So thank you, R. Coors or R. C. Oars. How do you say your name? Sorry. But thanks for sending that in. We really appreciate it. That's great stuff. All right, man. So uh, you feel good about this? this new, uh, uh, I feel kind of condensed in this little spot right little here spot. And, gonna, we, and we've seen this hallway millions of times we but have. We're gonna i work. think i'm gonna tear the store apart and make a better just kick the walls down yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna literally push this down and then uh we're gonna rebuild this place and hopefully by next week we'll have something new studio something looking a lot new nicer stu new studio for the show all right guys uh don't forget to also check out www.vglosers.com if you're into podcasts uh, pro wrestling podcast, MMA podcast, all that great stuff you can find there, as well as comic book reviews and lots more. And then KillinEnterprises.com, which is this lovely store, Killing Enterprises, right here. If you guys want to find toys or video games or comic books, anything like that, check us out at KillinEnterprises.com. That's right. And you can always find us here every Saturday for That New Toy Smell and reviews every day of the week at ThatNewToySmell.com. So until next week, guys, I'm Pixel Dan. I'm Killing. We're out. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you.